So the workshop that I'm going to do today is about using your iPhones or phones for photography. I use an iPhone, so it's going to be a little bit biased. <laughs> Very sorry about that. And do I have the little clicky thing? Right, we're going to get straight into it. So, I'm Laura, and I'm a photographer. I started photography when I had my first baby. Um, took photos of him. People thought, wow, that looks really great. Took photos of my family, took photos of their cousins. Finally got my first paid photo shoot, which was pretty amazing. Um, yeah, and it kind of just grew from there. Have another baby, stopped growing. <laughs> went on hold for a while, got back into it, had another baby. So it's sort of been this long, drawn-out process, but um, it's been fun, and I always like coming back to it. And now I'm, yeah, hopefully building it up more. And, um, yeah, so if, anyway, so we've all got our iPhones or phones. Um, don't know how much you know about taking photos with them, so I'm going to be very basic, and then there'll be other information as well. To start off with, it's called Getting Fast Access. So, I don't know if you all know, and I only just found this out not that long ago, but when you swipe up, you can actually access the camera straight away. You don't have to type your um, passcode in and all of that, and then you've got your camera right there. So, for all those moments, especially with little kids when they're doing something cute, you can just pull it out, whip it out, take the photo, and it's right there. You don't miss out on the action. I don't know if that's new for anyone, <laughs> but it was for me, and I'm just like, mind blowing, because it used to take me forever to find my little camera, and then the um, yeah, settings and stuff. Then we have the volume button to take sharper pictures. So, when you, you know, sometimes it's really hard to press the little button when you're holding it out like this, or even when you're taking a selfie of yourself. So often, for a more stable photo, you can just squeeze the button on the side. That helps to keep it a sharper image. Again, I've only known that maybe not that long. We also found out that you can have your, mic, um, your headphones, have your volume control on your headphones, that also works for taking photos. Again, mind blown because you're like, I can do a secret photo without anyone knowing <laughs> with my little button on my mic um, on my headphones. So um, that, yeah, it's all about um, when you take photos. Obviously, your camera, your phone, the lighting. You, you need to have lots of light, I guess, for it to have a faster shutter speed. So if there's not that much light, you want to do as much as you can to have a steady phone to take your photos, to get the sharper images. Lock your phone, your focus, to get the sharper images as well. So again, when you've got your, your um, camera out, when you press on something, it focuses on that thing. You can hold it in for longer, it flashes, and that's locked on that focal point. So then when you're also doing a bit of a shaky move, it will still keep focus on that object. So again, that helps to give you a sharper image. Um, so the one with the eye on that side, that was taken from a phone. So again, that's got your sharper. Obviously, there was a lot of light that day, though, so it was a faster shutter speed. But the possibility is there. <laughs> Use different angles. Often, sometimes we get stuck in just grabbing our photo, taking photos, when really, and I think Wes kind of said it quite a bit, you know, take your time to really focus on different elements, explore different angles. Um, I love the ones with kids where you actually get down on their level, their eye level. Giving a kid your um, camera to take photos opens up a whole new perspective because they're always looking up at things as opposed to down at things. Or even holding your phone above, you know, and you've got your bird's eye view sort of thing. That's kind of cool as well. It gives you an added bonus in that. What else have I got? 
looking for leading lines. Again, we're talking creativity. This is for photography in general. It doesn't have to be for your phone. Um, kind of just emphasises your subject that you're taking the photos of, and it kind of helps to add a bit more drama, I guess. So you can see how each... And lines are everywhere. I mean, once you start looking for them, it's so hard to stop seeing them. You know, I can see heaps here where you can just focus in. Um, yes, so there's lots of accessories that we can add to our phones to get better photos. I've got a few here. This is my tripod. Again, this really helps when to get a steady image and to get a clear picture. You can set this up for videoing, you can set it up for photos, um, do it with a self-timer, you don't even have to press the button, although depending on how far you're going, <laughs> you can run around or whatever, I don't know. Um, there's also power banks. I've needed a power bank quite a bit sometimes because my phone runs out of battery, although I don't have the latest phone, mine's only a, a number eight, I think, so. The cameras are a lot better now on some of these latest phones. But yeah, power bank's really good, so it means that you're not running out of battery. You can get lenses. I've got some clip-on lenses as well. Gives you a wide angle, gives you a macro, gives you a zoom. Um, what else? Lights, you can have like the ring lights, which are really cool for making the little, um, your eyes sparkle a bit more as well. Gives you a light on your face. Um, I have to be careful I don't talk about other things on my other slides. Go closer, don't zoom. So most of the time cameras on your phones are only digital zoom, they're not optical zoom. So your pictures end up a bit more pixelated, they're not very clear, it's just cropping in. So to get your best detail, you're better off just moving closer, taking the photo instead of cropping it in. You get a better um, blur or bokeh as well which helps. There you go, using the self-timer. So setting up the self-timer helps to um, give you a clearer photo. So basically, most of the time, you just want the clearest, sharpest photo you can. Self-timer is great for that. Again, you know, the button on the side, the volume button, locking it in. This helps you just so that, yeah, clearer image. Um, HDR mode. Some of us love it, some of us hate it. It's not for every photo you take, but it is on your phones, and most of the time it's automatic. You can make it not automatic, you can choose. Landscapes are perfect examples because you've got your sky, which will always be blown out if you're focusing on an object in front of you. Basically what it is, it's taking more than three photos adding them together, so you've got underexposed at one spectrum, overexposed at the other, a normal one, brings them all together, so your foreground has the right lighting, your background has the right lighting, everything in between has the right lighting. Um, real estate agents use it a lot because when they're shooting inside, you can see what's outside as well, which is, makes them look a bit fake. Because um, usually when you've got perfect light inside, you actually can't see what's outside at the same time. So they'll do it for that. When you've got other portraits, people and stuff, it's harder to get a good picture with your HR, um, HDR. But definitely landscapes and stuff like that. Capture it with burst mode. <laughs> I use this a lot when my kids are jumping on the trampoline and they want me to take photos of them doing the spin in the ear. Oh my goodness, it's so hard to press the button and capture them mid-ear because there's always a lag or something like that. You don't know if you're pressing it at the right time. So I always do burst shots as they are jumping in the ear. Then you go back and select the ones that, you know, showed them the best circle or whatever they were doing at the time. On the scooter, it's usually the scooter as well. Get me jumping over the jump. Half the time they've already hit the ground when I've got the photos. So you want to put them on burst. Obviously these pictures here, they've layered all the burst photos together. So you've got them jumping, which is cool as well. And you can do that with an app and some um, iPhone things. Framing your image. I noticed in Wes's videos, some of his 
great shots were framed really well. This is also just another really creative way to bring attention to the thing that you're taking photos of. I love it, and it's also a creative way of doing things. I don't know, gives it a, something a bit different, helps to really, um, oh, I've said it already, emphasise that thing, which is pretty cool. Steady yourself in low light. If you don't have a tripod, you're not using your self time or anything like this. I usually do it with my camera. I don't have my camera with me here. Half the time I'm, I'm resting my arms on my chest so that you can get that steady image. Or if you've got the um, camera strap, holding it like this guy, holding it tight like this so that it steadies you a bit more. Sometimes when you've got really low shutter speed, no matter what you do, you're always going to get a blurry image. So that's why you know, you've got your other techniques that you can use, leaning up against something, propping yourself up against the wall so you've got, um, yeah, steady. My hands get quite shaky, especially when I'm up the front talking to people. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. So that's why I'm not going to lean on anything. <laughs> I wish I could. Okay. Turn on the grid. This is a cool one. Um, I know it seems really basic. I use my grid on mine. Helps you to get the rule of thirds. Um, the rule of thirds is a way to really help balance your images. Um, creating something that's a bit more pleasing to the eye. I don't know what it is about the rule of thirds that make it look better. You don't, obviously, it's a rule. Rules can be broken there a lot of times that you don't have to use, you know, you don't need the rule of thirds. But with the grid on your phone, that helps you to locate and position what you're taking the photo of in that grid line where the rule of thirds are. Just to... I don't know, make it a bit more special, I guess, in your image, make it a bit more pleasing to look at. Turn off the flash. I hate flashes. In my um, normal photography world, I hardly ever use the flash. I just don't like the look that it gives. There are a lot of things you can do um, reflector-wise and you know, diffusing and stuff like that, but um, I love natural light, so finding spots that have more natural light next to a window, whether it's your side onto the window, looking at the window, away from the window, or turning all the lights on in the house so you've got a bit more lighting as well. Using a torch or light source from a different angle that's not attached to where your camera is also helps to give a bit more of a dramatic look as well and can help. Um, but as you can see, you can see the difference between with the flash on without the flash and how it can sort of just add a bit more, I don't know, niceness to your picture, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> also experiment, so you can experiment with your different lighting. These are backlit pictures, so um, I think on my next slide I'll show how you can change the lighting and stuff on your phone, but just having time to position yourself and try different placings of the light. See what it's like from behind, see what it's like in front. You can get the halo effect where you've got the light that shines just around the heads. Um, even light flares are cool as well, where you, the camera, the sun reflects into your lens and creates a bit of a flare. They can add a lot of coolness to images. There you go, exposure. So with your camera, when you click in a different spot on here, it will take the lighting from that spot that you've clicked. So that's how you are you know, changing your exposure at the time. You can then click it and drag your finger up and down and that will also change the exposure on your image. That way you can get your different, so you can see with the flowers on the edge, they've just clicked in different spots and it's given you a different lighting for that. So you can actually use your phone to get images like this, where you uh, normally your phone wouldn't naturally have it that dark, but because you've clicked in that spot, it's been able to do what you want it to, basically, which are pretty cool. Keeping it simple. Sometimes I think we like to put lots of flair of fun stuff in our images, sometimes taking things away is actually more effective than adding them in. 
and they look, I don't know, for me, it looks arty and stuff as well. So that's just my little thing. Find the right photo. I Googled this, some of these tips. This was one of them, and it blew my mind because we didn't realise that it worked. I don't know if anyone else knows this, but in your library, it was in the library, isn't it? You can type any word in the search bar, and it finds all the photos that have something to do with that word. And we, we did, what was the one that we did? Um, hot air balloon, and it actually found those big balls that are blowing up that you can run into people, thinking that was a hot air balloon. But still, and it looked just like a hot air balloon, really, but it wasn't. But I was, this one actually got me. I didn't realise that we could do this on our phones. So now you can, yeah, like they've typed in wedding, any photo that looks like a wedding shows up in your photos, which is pretty cool. And I think that was the end. So um, taking the photo is one thing, editing it is another thing, which is all another series that I could talk about because I love editing stuff. These are just a couple of places um, Visco and Lightroom are my post-editing apps. Um, not sure if you have to pay. You can get a free version of I um, Lightroom, but some of those other, they're just, there's so many things that you can do for your photos. When you see people's Instagram feeds and they all look consistent and the same, they've usually put a preset and they've got their own sort of um, filter. You can buy those filters from Creative Market or there's other places that you can buy them from and then you can just put them on all your images and it just makes them all the same tones, same colours, you know, enhances them the same way. So it helps to keep them all consistent. But yeah, editing is a whole nother level, which I love doing. <laughs> and it's hard to look at people's photos from Instagram and stuff like that and think, oh, I could do that, when really it's, they've done a lot of editing to them or something. Anyway, but hopefully I've given you enough little simple tips that will help you to take photos better. So, enjoy.